Hello students and welcome to chapter six. We're going to be discussing chemical reactions in this chapter. We're going to be talking about all the different aspects like how does combustion work with um, gasoline in our cars to creating rocket fuel. Okay, We're going to be discussing how we take things in nature and we combine them. There's this reaction that occurs and we're making new things. So chemical reactions, that's kind of an idea of what we're going to be discussing throughout this chapter. So Okay, to begin our discussion, we're going to be modeling chemical reactions. And to first understand it, we're going to use word equations. Okay, it's kind of an easy way to kind of introduce um, chemical reactions. Now, there's two vocab words I want you to write down the vocabulary for. There's the reactants and the products. So to represent a chemical reaction, you need to show the substances present before the reaction. And those are what we call the reactants. It's the things that we have before. For example... Uh, if you've ever been camping, you've had a log fire going, does the log burn with the air? Yeah, but it takes a little bit of energy to get that started. So our reactants would be our log and the oxygen in the air, but they're not reacting yet. We have to add some heat to get that chemical reaction started. And on the left side of the reaction arrow, um, sorry, on the left side, so the reactants are on the left side of the reaction arrow, on, and the subsequent present after the reaction, the products are on the right side of the reaction arrow. So basically the idea of these is the products are on the right, the reactants are on the left, and you're combining the reactions to form a new substance. Okay. All right. Um, let's scroll down a little bit. Now, here's a good example of iron and oxygen. Okay. Um, if you've ever seen cars, you're, you remember Mater. Okay. Mater is no longer in steel or iron car. He's now rust. He is something totally new, okay? The iron that he was made out of reacted with oxygen over time because his paint came off. That's kind of why we paint things. The reason we paint cars and houses is to prevent oxygen and sunlight and all these different energies from reacting with substances, okay? It's kind of preventing a preventative barrier to create iron oxide or those other substances. So, Mayer is being his paint came off. He's reacting with the oxygen in the air and rust and rain, and now we've got something totally new called iron three oxide. Okay, it's a new substance. It's no longer the same thing. It has new characteristics that iron and oxygen don't have. Okay, but it's now a new substance. Okay, down here below, there's one more example. Uh, we have a woman baking bread, <clears throat> and if we notice, there's a lot of reactants that go into making bread: flour, eggs, milk, salt, baking powder, oil, okay? It's funny that they're making bread without yeast, okay? I think you could do that, okay? But in most reactions, you usually have yeast as your leavening agent. You put in some sugar. That yeast actually eats the sugar um, and releases carbon dioxide gas, which causes your bread to rise. So you usually let it rise for a while before you bake it, okay? And then our new product is called bread, so we have a new thing. It's no longer eggs, flour, and all these different um, ingredients. It's now an entirely new thing called bread. Okay, you don't just eat flour plain or eggs plain. Okay, well you can cook these things, but when it's all together, we now have a new thing. So that's, that's the whole idea with chemical reactions. We have parts, and then we have a new thing that we're making or we're going to create in a chemical reaction. Okay, thanks for watching.